Good afternoon from All City Stadium. It's the 4A State High School Football Championship, Cherry Creek against Thomas Jefferson. Hi, everybody. This is Ron Zapolo along with Sandy Clough and Son Pagano. And today we have it, the final game in this 1980 football season, TJ and Cherry Creek. TJ, 12-1, Cherry Creek, 10-3. A game of backyard neighbors, both schools located very close to each other, and they are here now for the final in what should be, we hope, a great ball game. It is football weather at game time. It is 27 degrees, a slight wind. There was some fog this morning, but it's burnt off now. The field looks to be in good condition for this 4A state high school final. We'll take a break. We'll come back and talk with Sandy and Sam when we return in 60 seconds. Not too many folks might have predicted a few weeks ago that these two teams would be here this afternoon playing for the state championship. Cherry Creek in the regular season lost three games, a lot for them. Smoky Hill, Arapahoe, and Fairview, but then they caught fire during the playoffs, and they have found themselves here. They beat Columbine 9-7. They shut out Regis 29 to nothing, and then the win last week, and that has put Cherry Creek into this final game. Their coach, Fred Tassone, 19 years here, 15 playoff appearances. In fact, the last 10 years, he's been here every year, but this is the first time he has been in the final. He's been in the semifinals six times, so it really shapes up as a great one. TJ, on the other hand, knocked off last week the number one team in the state, Air Academy, 14 to 12, behind the pass of Eric Black and the running of Lloyd Day. Black last week, three of four for 116 yards, two touchdowns. Day carried it 26 times, 162 yards. I'm happy to be working this afternoon with my good friend Sandy Club from KOA and the head coach at Fairview, Sam Pagano, who would rather be down the field, but he has graciously consented to come up here and do it with us. And guys, I guess the first thing, basically the game shapes up as a matchup, I think, of the TJ Potent offense against a pretty good Cherry Creek defense. And uh, Sam have you seen that defense? Well, I think, times I think Cherry Creek is playing outstanding defense. Probably the key to their success right now is their win over Columbine, and they're playing great defense. And I think any time you're in the playoffs and you're playing great defense, that's what's going to carry you on to the championship. Okay, now today they go up against uh, at least two great individuals. Uh, Lloyd Day, the quarterback, Eric Black, throws it around a lot. Day likes to run it, does it very well, has had uh, over 300 yards in these playoffs. How do they stop these two individuals? Well, I think Day has great speed, and I think it'll be an interesting matchup with Cherry Creek's quick defense and trying to contain Day. But I, in reading the newspaper and the media all week, I think Dr. Herman Moats is going to go to the air, and I think he's very wise. They're such they're quick on defense, and I think that will help TJ by trying to throw the ball today. Can they do that under these conditions today? Can I they throw as easily as they might have liked? I think the conditions are fine. It's a little cool out there. The field looks like it's muddy and slick, but it's not. It's very solid, and uh, I think the field conditions are excellent for today's game. In anticipating a close game, which I think we all do here this afternoon, uh, you have to look ahead and imagine that it might come down to the kicking game. And these two teams have two of the great kicking games in high school football in the state. Well, both of them are excellent kickers. Hal's been successful all year, and of course, Goldie has is, is, is kicked the ball well. Matter of fact, he kicked uh, well against us the night that we played Cherry Creek. But in, in watching Cherry Creek over the years, their special teams has always contributed to their success. And in one game that I was watching Cherry Creek play Douglas County, their special teams won the ball game with punt returns. Now, looking at the other side of things, we talked about Cherry Creek's defense, but uh, their offense really can't be overlooked. They've made some changes. I know they had some injuries early. Uh, came on late in the season. John Tassone has run well for them in the playoffs, so they basically like to uh, keep on the ground. Okay. Cherry Creek is an outstanding offensive football team. Over the years, they've probably led the state in offensive stats. I would say that they, they're, they're solid. They're coached real well by Fred Tassone, their offense, and of course, John Tassone can explode from any place on the field and break the game open. Sam, let me just ask you one thing. I know you're good friends with Fred Tassone. We walk in together. You wanted to walk over and wish him luck. This is the first time he's ever been here. As a, as a man who has won this game, sentimentally, you have to have a little spot in there for him. Oh, I'm rooting for Fred. I'll be very, you know, I, Thanks, I'm man. rooting for Cherry Creek. I'm rooting for Fred. And of course, they're in the Centennial League, and, and I think it would be great for Fred Tassone to win a state championship. But also, Herman Motes is a heck of a guy. Right? Okay. Now there's been some talk about the Centennial League being tremendously strong as opposed to the Prep League, which hasn't done quite as well in recent years. Do uh, you think that's uh, 
a real advantage for a team like Cherry Creek if they play tougher competition throughout the season. Well, let's put it this way. I think uh, the Centennial League is awful strong, and I think the Centennial League has been in the finals for a number of years, but that doesn't matter today. TJ is here. They have arrived. If they have their quickness in their passing game, it doesn't make any difference. I think uh, anything could happen today. Okay, and we will be back to take a look at the starting lineups with Ron in just a minute. What? Santa Claus back at All City Stadium with Ron Zapolo and Sam Pagano. We are some five minutes away from kickoff, and it is TJ warming up uh, to our left at the moment. Sherry Creek has uh, left the field. They'll be returning shortly. And now to set the starting lineups for this afternoon's game, here's Ron. Okay, thanks very much, Sandy. For the Spartans of Thomas Jefferson now off to our left, and brown shirts, the yellow pants, and the white numbers, they'll line up on offense like this. The split end will be Pat Brewer, 6'1", 145 pounds, a junior. He's had seven catches for 129 yards and two touchdowns. He's backed up by a good one, Jay Diedrich, 6'1", 161 pounds, a senior, four catches, 93 yards, a big touchdown last week. The left tackle is Aaron Bernstein, 6'1", 192 pounds, a senior. The left guard is Tom Simmons, 5'11", 200 pounder. He is also a senior. The center is a good one, Scott Schwader, 6'1", 175 pounds, a senior. The right guard is Martin Foster, 5'10", 173. He's a junior. The right tackle, also a tough one, Jim Marr, 6 feet, 210 pounds a senior. He can go both ways. The tight end, Andre Martin, 6'2", 180 pounds, a senior, 35 catches on the year for 593 yards and five touchdowns. The offensive backfield, and it is a good one. The quarterback is Eric Black, a junior, 6'1", 168 pounds. On the year, he has thrown 81 uh, receptions and 153 attempts for 1,178 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Derek Black, as you heard Sam Pagano say in the pregame, they expect to put the ball up. The fullback is Dane Ingram, 6 feet, 185 pounds, a senior, and he has some impressive credentials. He has rushed the ball 97 times for 619 yards and 10 touchdowns, a heck of an average over over uh, 6 yards a carry. He's also caught 9 balls for 103 yards and 1 touchdown. Dane Ingram, the fullback. The slot back will be Spencer Ritchie, 6 feet, 157 pounds. He is a senior. He has caught 22 for 198 yards. He's also rushed the ball six times for 47 yards. The tailback, the one everybody has talked about, is Lloyd Day, the junior, 5'8", 160 pounds. Not big, but he packs a punch. 258 rushes for 1,346 yards and an amazing 21 touchdowns. Day has also caught eight passes for 91 yards. He'll be back up by the other tailback, that being Calvin Price. Now for Cherry Creek on defense. At left defensive end will be Corey Helm. He is a good one. 6'5", 195 pounds. He is a senior. He's also a tight end on offense. One of the better players on this defense. The left tackle is Kyle Schmidt. 6'1", 210 pounds a senior. The right tackle is Mike Adams. 5'11", 190 pound junior. The right end, Eric Seifert. 5'11", 180 pound senior. The linebackers are a good group. At left linebacker, Keith Pitts. 5'8", 175 pounds a junior. The middle linebacker Linebacker Mike Elkins, 5'10", 190 pounds. He is a junior. The right linebacker Dave Cochetti, 5'10", 180 pounds. He's a senior. The deep four, their quarterback, starts at one of the quarterback spots. That's Ted Dorrance, 6'1", 175 pounds. A senior. One of the safeties, a good wide receiver, Russ Perkins, 6'1", 170 pounds. Senior. The other safety, Jeff Swanson, who's a tight end, six feet, uh, six feet 175 pounds. He's a senior. And the other cornerback, Mark Hollinger, 5'11", 180-pound senior. That is the way the Cherry Creek defense, a good defense that has had seven shutouts this season, lines up. We're almost ready for uh, TJ and Cherry Creek to start it off here for the 4A State Prep High School Football Championship game. We'll be back to All City Stadium in 60 seconds. All City Stadium, let's take now 10 seconds for station identification. This is the voice of the Rocky Mountain West, News Talk 85, KOA Denver. Back at All City Stadium, we are nearing game time as they're getting ready for the toss of the coin. The gentleman, the field looks to be in good shape. Any last second comments or feelings? Well, I think we uh, stuck to the thing at the beginning. It's going to come down to the Cherry Creek defense and uh, the TJ offense if they can keep 
Black and Day in check, and Cherry Creek figures to have the advantage. But uh, we really didn't get into it on a pregame. But on a day like this, and one game is depth and size, a real advantage. I was for the just Cherry thinking Creek. about that. I was thinking about depth, and I just question how many kids from TJ go both ways, Ron. Maybe that might make it make a factor. I think it will be quite. A, I think it'll be a very definite factor, Sam. As TJ won the toss. And uh, they will receive the football to our left in the brown shirts, yellow pants. They'll get the football to our left. Cherry Creek will kick off to our right. And I think, Sam, that is a factor on a day like this, how many kids do go both ways. There are a few on both teams. But I've always wondered when, when kids go both ways, how much does that take out of a play? Well, I really, it's a big effect on your kids. We had four or five going both ways, and in some games it could wear you down. The situation that I'm thinking about, Ron, I think a great linebacker is Dave Ingram. And I just noticed in the paper this morning he goes both ways at fullback, and he's their, their big linebacker. So I'll be real curious to watch and see how he performs going both ways. Yeah, I believe he is their leading tackler, I think, on defense this year. And, of course, on the Cherry Creek side, you have Ted Dorrance at a cornerback and also playing quarterback. If they throw the ball a lot, what will that do to Ted Dorrance's stand? Well, I think Cherry Creek has other people that they could substitute, and they do have some depth to give Dorrance a blow there. Well, I think that's true, and I also think when you look, uh, Sam and Sandy, at the Cherry Creek defense, most of their defensive backs, their starters, are kids that do get a lot of playing time on offense. Was Perkins, Jeff Swanson, Mark Hollinger. Perkins goes both ways. He's an outstanding receiver in, a, in an all-conference Centennial League defensive back, but I think they do have people, uh, Ron, that can give them a blow. They do have some depth. Well, we're about ready to go here as the bands are on the field. We're awaiting the start of this game as Cherry Creek lined up to one side, TJ on the other. We're waiting the national land. And you know, this morning, the visibility was not good this morning. There was quite a fog, but most of it is burnt off now. The field seems to be in pretty good condition. It seems to be hard and to dry. So, I don't think it'll be a problem, especially that means a lot to TJ with the passing game that I'm sure they want to use today. The field will be in pretty good shape. So we are about ready to start here. Cherry Creek in their first ever 4A state final. Sam, what was your feeling the first time you were on this field for your first final? Well, we played at Rex Stadium in 1977, and I was a little shook up not knowing and just being excited. Your first reaction, Ron, is just to be in the championship. But then from there, you want to win the ball game. And as we went on, we gained a little experience, and we got better at being in the finals. You know, that's another big point that we ought to talk about here for a minute while we have a chance. Most, in most sports, the goal is always to get to the playoffs, to get to the final. When you've never got there before, like Fred Sasson and Cherry Creek, is it enough just to have made it there? I think Fred's goal better be to win the state championship, not to get there. I know there was one Super Bowl team that that was their goal. I think it was the Minnesota Vikings right. or someone that their goal was to get to the Super Bowl. I think your goal is to win the state championship, and I'm sure Cherry Creek is feeling that way, and same as TJ. Okay, let's go down to the field for our national anthem.
Okay. Uh, you're familiar with that. When we look back on games in the past, games like this, you have a tendency to see low-scoring games where coaches don't take a lot of chances. Is that because of the importance of the game? I think that is. I know in our championship games, the scores have always been low, like 14 to 7, 6-6, six, six, 10 to 7. That, that can happen today, but I think maybe not because these two teams are explosive offensively, and I know what their emotions are like right now, Ron, and these kids' stomachs, and I know what, what uh, Coach Moats and Coach DeSone's feeling like. It's a, it's a terrible feeling. Your guts are hanging out there. But I, I think maybe I may say that both teams are explosive. We might have some offense today. But yet when it gets close, Ron, they'll, they'll be conservative and play defense and have a strong kicking game just to win the game. Right. Well, it's worked in the past. They'll try and work it again today. TJ will get the ball first. They'll uh, send back Calvin Price who has had some success returning kicks this year, 10 returns for 224 yards. As TJ now runs out to our left, left side of the stadium, Jerry Creek in their white uniforms, trimmed in red and blue, will kick off to the right. 27 degrees of game time. Good crowd. The, uh, the cold weather has not held down this crowd one bit. We are, we are to capacity right here at All City Stadium, a crowd of around 6,500. If you've never seen a high school state championship game, you're missing something because there's as much emotion here as you'll want to see in any football game. And we are about ready to begin. The 4A State High School Championship, T.J. and Cherry Creek. Cherry Creek, their first appearance ever in the game. Bill Goldie will kick it off. We'll make that Jeff Swanson will be the, kick, the kicker. Calvin Price will return. Clear day. No snow, just a lot of cold, 27 degrees. DJ with the passing offense. Let's see if they work on any ball control or put it up right away. Eric Black, their quarterback, likes to throw. They've got Lloyd Day, of course, the brilliant 5'8 junior in the backfield. We are underway. A short kick. It's coming down. Price has it, bobbles it, picks it up on about the 10, makes a cut to his right, and he's hit. Gets away from one man, hit again, and he is down. Not much of a return. Mike Elkins on the hit for Cherry Creek. Ron, they really swarmed on him and played great kickoff coverage. They're in a bad spot. They're starting their first offensive series about inside your 15-yard line. Ball looks to be Sam on about the 13. And you're right. They're in a tough position to start. Eric Black, the junior quarterback, brings him out. First and 10 to the 13. Man in motion. Handoff goes right up the middle of the day. It's not much. Maybe only a yard or two. Gang tackling there by Cherry Creek. Stopped right up in the middle of the line. Let's give him two yards out to just over the 15. Make it about second and eight for Thomas Jefferson. Eric Black. Backs lined up in an eye. Falling singles, man in motion again is Spencer Ritchie. The pitch out goes out to Lloyd Day. He's out to the right, but he's hauled down. A great tackle out there. Bri uh, Brian Salazar was out there, along with Mark Hollinger and Keith Pitts. Right, he has great speed, but I'll tell you what, the defense really swarmed around him, and if they continue to do that, Day's going to have a hard time getting outside on him. He really is. He tried to run wide that time, really never got outside. And Cherry Creek now faced in a passing situation, or TJ now in a passing situation at third and eight. Spencer Ritchie in the slot, backs in an eye. Black. Hands it right up the middle, right up in the middle of the line to Dane Ingram. Ingram gets good yardage out to about the 23, 23 and a half. Russ Perkins coming up from the safety position to make the hit. Now the question is, do we have a first down? I think we'll have a measurement. That's close, Ron. 
It does look very close, Sam. It's right out there at about the 23. That was a good hold. Uh, TJ had good splits there, and they just ran a basic fullback give, and Ingram did a good job getting up there. A little surprised on third and eight that they would run the ball. Well, I think the field position had something to do with it. I know that's always a good call on third and long for the fullback, John. Well, it works, and they got the first down. They got the first down. Mm. How important is it, Sam, to get that first first down oh, I think from it, that position? I think it gives you some momentum and, and gives you some confidence that you can move the ball. You hate your first series to, you know, series to punt the ball. Well, TJ does have that first first down, and they've got it at their own 23. Not much of a kickoff return, but they've hammered out a first down. Ingram and Day in the backs, they're now split. Spencer Ritchie to the left. Eric Black, the junior, calling the signals. Fakes it, rolls along the line, pitches out to Day, gets a block, makes a good run, gets another block. And Eric Day, Lloyd Day, out to about the 35-yard line. Black did an excellent job, Ron, running the option. He ran the corner and made a great pitch. He really executed that well. He, he really did. Mark Hollinger was up there on the stop. They also did a little bit of himself with some nice running. He's got some moves, doesn't he? It's going to be really exciting watching Dave run the ball this, this afternoon. Ball's out to the 37-yard line. There's Black calling the signals. This is hand up right up the middle to Ingram. Nothing doing there. Maybe a yard at the most. Mike Elkins, the middle linebacker, 5'10", 190-pound junior, in on the hit. So it's given two yards, called a second down and about eight. Here's a situation, Ron, where we may get a passing situation, second and long, and they got good field position. Now maybe we can see TJ throw the ball. Spencer Ritchie again in the slot, backs are split. Black has not thrown yet. Terry Creek, five men up the line of scrimmage. That pitch out right there is back to Day, or back to Ingram. Ingram turns the corner. He's got Ruby in midfield, the 40. And he's finally brought down by Russ Perkins. Play developed, Sam and Sandy, way behind the line of scrimmage, but Ingram had time to get around the corner. That's right, Sam, and we saw them get outside of the linebackers and uh, force the play into the second. Again, there. Sandy, they ran the option, but what happened? The two Cherry Creek guys both came up, and TJ didn't get the blocks on him. He just simply outran him and got around the corner. Excellent speed, TJ has. Well, I'm surprised, Sam, to see TJ doing it exclusively on the ground and banging it out from their own 13 to the Cherry Creek 40. Also, I thought they would mix it up. Here we are first down, Ron. First and 10 from the 40. The backs in the eye. Eric Black just handing off left and right and making it work. This time the handoff goes to the junior day. Give him about three yards down to the Cherry Creek 37. The left end and a good one. Corey Helm, 6'5", 195 pounds, a senior. Was there to meet him. Helm, one of those players we talked about in the free game that will go both ways for Cherry Creek. The day gets three. That's second down and about seven. And around this drive now, three and a half minutes old. They control the ball on the ground and they keep the ball out of Cherry Creek's hands. That's right. 8.25 to go in the first quarter. Clock moving. Backs now in a nine. As TJ shifts up, changes their formation. Black looking out, hasn't passed yet. Straight handoff right up the middle to Ingram. Give him about two yards. And he is hit in there by Dave Cochetti, the right middle linebacker, 5'10", 180 pounds. A senior, obviously Cochetti, a favorite of Sam and mine. Uh, Ron, I was just talking to, to some coaches here, the Cherry Creek coaches, that they usually pass their basic formation is odd. This is the first time they've seen split backs. Well, so it's a new formation. Trying something new in the most important game of the season, third and five. They're in the eye now. Day the, day the tailback. Black now goes back, rolls to his right. He will pass. Looks, throws. He's got Day complete. Day inside the twenty. He's down to about the fifteen-yard line. Black, the boy Day. Pretty plays. Black rolled to his right. Found Day. It was finally get brought down by strong safety Russ Perkins. But all of a sudden, the first pass play of the game successful. TJ now a first down. On the 13-yard line, Perkins and Swanson in there on the hit. That was a sprint draw fake. He faked a day and then brought him upside and brought him outside, Ron. Two good athletes performing there. Well, Spencer Ritchie is now in the backfield. Three men deep now in the backfield. Ritchie gets up now, goes in motion to his left. 
Black rolls along the left, runs the option, pitches out to Day. Day on the outside. He gets to the 10, into about the 7, where he's knocked down in there by Dave Cochetti and Ted Doris, coming up from his uh, quarterback spot. But I'll tell you one thing, Sam and Sandy, Day and Ingram, especially Day, such quickness, they are getting to the outside. And the offensive line of uh, TJ getting off the ball well, blowing some people out. Sandy, they are coming off the ball, but what they're doing, Black is really reading the option and pitching the ball on the corner, and Day has great quickness. All he needs is a little block, and he's going to make some yardage. Ball's on about the seven-yard line. It's called second down and four on the far side of the field. Now, Eric Black, full house backfield. Spencer Ritchie in the backfield right now. Here's the snap. The handoff goes up the middle today. He's about near the five-yard line. He was stood straight up in there by Mike Elkins. And the ball now just outside the five-yard line. Ron, it's going to be tough. Cherry Creek linebackers are ex excellent players in Elkins and Pitts and Cachetti. They really play excellent football. Well, it's the third down now, Sam, and a couple yards to go. And it's tough, as you know, as everybody knows who watches football, to get the yards this close to the end zone. Look for option, Ron. All right, Sam wants the option. Let's see. Three men in the back. Field. Day runs the pitches to the left. It goes to Day. Day outside gets a block. He is down close to the goal line. He's down to about the one. And Steve Berlin made the hit down there to prevent a touchdown. Sam had that one called. Black along to the left the line of scrimmage. They gave back to Day. Ron, they gave power eye right to the right. They ran counter option, went to the split end, and again, Day and uh, Day and Black really execute the option. Then his little quickness got him an extra yard or two. Well, it's called about the two and a half yard line. First down and goal for TJ. And if they've been impressive in this first drive of the game. Black calling the signals. Here's the handoff. It goes up the middle today. Is he in? Oh, he's right at the goal line. Right at the goal line. Mike Elkins, the middle linebacker. In there on the hit. And Ron Elkins getting up a little slowly. Now he's to his feet. And we'll have a second and goal. Day well on his way, apparently, to another 100-yard game. He's had two of them. Day, you look at Day, 5'8 and 160 pounds. Not that big, but he runs hard. Very the impressive, ground. Ron. Great quickness, and he does run tough. Backs are split. Spencer Ritchie, the, Spencer Ritchie gets the ball. He's near the goal line, but I don't think he got in. Spencer Ritchie, the slot back, is stopped just a bit short. And we're going to have a third and goal situation. When you line up in the power eye, Ron, and you bring the ball back to the power eye, he's six to seven yards back. It does take some time. Maybe they should go with quarterback Snake or give the ball to the big fullback, Ingram. Well, they basically, Sam, move the ball down the field with, with pitches to Ingram and uh, Day. You would think they might try it down here inside the five. Let's see what they do on third and goal. Just outside the goal line, they're in the power eye, as Sam said. Richie, the deep back. Here's the handoff. It goes to Richie again. He's close. Did he get in? We don't have a signal yet. It doesn't look like I one. don't think he did, Sam. They're right in the goal line. What a goal line stand this is. Coach right Moses has got a big decision here to either kick. It doesn't look like he's going to go for a field goal. And Dorrance appears to be the other one. No, the other one is Dave Cochetti. And they will take the kick. Cherry Creek will get their hands on the ball for the first time this afternoon. 16 plays, Ron, 88 yards, 32 of those yards by Day and 34 by Ingram, the two big running backs. you got to give a lot of credit to Black, the way that he ran the option there, Ron. You really do, TJ, very impressive. It's a short kick. It'll be taken up there by Salazar. Salazar gets a few blocks, good return. He's out close to the 35-yard line before he's finally brought down by Jay Layshock. So Cherry Creek gets the ball for the first time. They'll have it on their own 33. 3.42 to go first quarter. T.J. leads it. 7 to nothing. Ted Dorrance is the quarterback. He'll be flanked back there by Brian Salazar, Mark Hollinger, and John Tassone. And they're in the wishbone. The handoff, the pitch goes back to Salazar, gets the block, and he's hit at about the 35, and pulled down from there. Jan Keith Gatewood came up from his left cornerback position, put a good hit on Brian Salazar. Last week, uh, Ron, I was going to say my coaches were here and watched uh, Lakewood play. They were very impressed with Gateway, thought he was an excellent athlete, maybe a college prospect. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing you have to be impressed with is TJ defense. 30 interceptions. That's great in any leg, Ron, any leg. Second down, about eight. 
Ted Dorrance, the quarterback, rolls to his right, and he hands off to the fullback. Brian Salazar didn't get too much. Up to the right side, out to about the 38, maybe the, about the 38-yard line. Scott Fisher, the left end, 5'8", 172-pound junior, was there on the stop. So it'll face Cherry Creek, a third and five. Scott Lure, wide, split to the right. Tight end is Jeff Swansea. Back rolling to his right goes Dorrance. Has blocking, has time, looking downfield. Now he comes back to his left. He may run the ball. He's going to try and run it. He's in trouble right there. And he's hit and brought down by Scott Fisher again, about maybe for a yard gain out to the 39-yard line. And that'll bring up a fourth down. TJ has stopped it, but rather impressive. Sam, they uh, line up in some odd configurations defensively, don't they? Oh, I think TJ will give you a lot of different looks. But what I was impressed with, Sandy, the way they swarm around the football, and they'll really hit you. And they are not that big either. No, they're not. But Ingram leads this attack, and uh, I'm really impressed with Gateway on that one play that he came up and made that stick. Well, Mark Hollinger will do the punting for Cherry Creek. Calvin Price, deep for TJ. And now I think we've got to delay a game. That's exactly what we do have. The layup game on Cherry Creek. Let him move it back five more yards, back to the 35-yard line. Oh, a few problems here early for Cherry Creek. Well, it looked like they're starting out a little slow, Ron, the way they moved the ball there. And then the, I don't know what happened on this delay of game, but uh, this ought to be an interesting uh, series right here. All right, Spencer Ritchie and Calvin Price, deep for TJ. Here comes the punt by Hollinger, a flag down, flag is down, the punt fair catch called for by Price, and he makes it at about the 33-yard line, but the flag is back on about the 25. Let's see what we've got. We've got an offsides on Thomas Jefferson. Well, Coach, let's go right to you. Do you take it or do you decline it? Well, I think they're going to take the penalty, but it's still going to be fourth in a couple of yards, Ron, so I don't think it'll make any difference. Well, it'll basically make up the five they lost for the delay of game. That's about it. So Cherry Creek will punt it again. It'll be fourth and about three. Unless, of course, they try something tricky, but as we talked about in the pregame, you want to save that stuff. It's when you're too in the early game. in the game now, Ron. They won't try anything tricky. The other thing that you can do is line up in a power eye and just uh, go with a long count and try to get him to jump offside. Well, let's try it again. Hollinger standing on his own 25, ready to punt to either Calvin Price or Spencer Ritchie. Here's the snap. It's got time. Good kick, coming down towards Calvin Price on his 27, makes the fair catch. That's a safe one right there at the 27. So Thomas Jefferson, on their second possession, will take over on their own 27 with a 7 to nothing lead. That's about 14 yards up the field from where they had it the first time, and uh, no reason to change their approach now. I don't think so, Say This is great field position compared to the first one, and uh, I think maybe let's see if Cherry Creek will stiffen up and play a little bit better defense on this series. Well, let's see just what they do. Spencer Ritchie this time is split wide to the right. The backs are split. Ingram and Day. Eric Black calling signals on his own 27. Black hands off right up the middle to Ingram. Give him maybe one or two as he's hit right there by Cherry Creek's Mike Adams. Sam, you talked about Cherry Creek stepping up a little bit on defense. Maybe they've made some adjustments. I think so. They're jumping around a little bit on defense like they usually do. They're not giving TJ the same look every snap, Ron. So I think they will play a little bit, bit better defense on this series. They are changing up around on defense. They are showing the TJ some different looks. They're in a four-man front at the moment. Backs are split. Second down. About eight. And now we've got a flag. Let's see what it is. We've got an illegal procedure call on Thomas Jefferson. You saw well, that jumping around for well, a while. I, Sandy, I'll tell you what causes that was Cherry Creek's defense is designed like that to jump off, to, to jump around and get you to jump off. We have that problem every year that we play them, and they do an excellent job of that. Their linebackers, Sam, are really active. Mike uh, Elkins and Keith Pitts, they move from linebacker almost up to defensive it's lineman. Very confusing for an offensive lineman to pick that up. Second and 13, Spencer Ritchie in the slot, backs are split, Ingram and Day, 
Pitch now comes up in the line of scrimmage. The rollout's going left. It's a pitch to Day. Uh, Ingram. Ingram gets outside. He's got blocking. He's got room. He's at the 45 to 50. And he's finally brought down by Russ Perkins, the safety. And about midfield. So on a second and 13, when it looked like Cherry Creek would finally rise up and play a little defense, Black rolled to his left, pitched it to Ingram, and Dane Ingram gets the first down at midfield. And Jeff Swanson had a good shot at him in the line of scrimmage, and he broke the tackle. He sure did. The thing that they're doing is they keep running the dive option, and Black and Dave do an excellent job of executing the offense. That one play, that one play has moved him up and down the field, Sandy. Well, that's the end of the first quarter, and it's been an impressive one for Thomas Jefferson. At the end of the first quarter here at All City Stadium, the score, Thomas Jefferson 7 and Jerry Creek nothing will return after this. Like Thomas Jefferson up to this point, they have moved 88 yards for a touchdown. They have stopped Jerry Creek without a first down, and they now have the ball, first and 10, on the Jerry Creek 49-yard line. Eric Black brings them out, backs are in an eye. First and 10 for the 49. There's Black, the handoff goes right up the middle to Ingram. Give him about two yards before he's hit and brought down by Corey Young and Kyle Smith. Second down. Kyle outstanding young man. His dad is Harv Schmidt, who used to be play for the D.C. Truckers and was the head coach of the University of Illinois. Kyle Smith is a big, strong, heavyweight wrestler and outstanding defensive lineman. Second and seven for Thomas Jefferson. They've done most of their damage on the ground with the option sweeps. Black, the junior quarterback, rolls to his right, hands off up to the middle of the day. And he gets about another two yards. Running him all of a sudden here is slowed down a little bit. I tell you, Ron, he might have busted that. He had good open field running. He just tripped here on the on his own accord or someone tripped him up. Yeah, third and about five down from the Jerry Creek 44 yard line. Passing situation, but so far TJ has managed to keep it on the ground. Jake Diedrich is split wide to the left. In a passing formation. Backs are split. Black, though, hands off right up the middle to Dave. Dave Buckley's 37 yard line. Sam, he just looks like a natural runner the way he twists and turns when he gets hit. He has great acceleration. He comes off the ball awful quick, and like you said, he does twist and turn pretty good. Outstanding back. This is my first time to see him. Ron, I'm very impressed with Lloyd Day. Well, Lloyd Day has given TJ a first down at the Cherry Creek 37 yard line as they have dominated so far here early in this 4 8 title game. Black now hands it off up the middle, a big hole for Ingram. Ingram down across the 30 to about the 27 yard line. And they are just doing it with big chunks. Finally brought down by linebacker Dave Cochetti with TJ, an amazing performance on the ground. So about 135 yards total offense so far, well over 100 on the ground. Uh, could you imagine beforehand, Sam, if they could be doing what well, they're Sandy, doing? What the situation might be, this is the first time that TJ has used split backs and talking to the Cherry Creek coaches next to us, and they're running the dive on them, and uh, this is maybe something they haven't prepared for. First and ten for TJ at the Cherry Creek 27. Black, a quarterback sneak right up the middle, maybe good for a yard, hit down by Mike Adams, the big right tackle, 5'11", 190-pound junior. There's an unusual call in a first and 10 at the 27. Well, maybe he saw something with the Cherry Creek guards playing a little bit of a, a wide situation in the gaps there, and he thought maybe he had some room. Well, let's come about a yard to the 26. Call it second down and nine for Thomas Jefferson. Diedrich split wide to the left. Richie in the slot. Backs are in an eye. Black. A lot of poise for a junior as he calls the signals. Stands up straight from the line of scrimmage. He's throwing. He's got Spencer Richie. It's a touchdown. the ball on a five, doubled it for a few yards, was hit but fell down into the end zone. And we've got an amazing 
situation went on our hands early here in the second quarter. Thomas Jefferson now out in front of Jerry Craig, 13 to nothing. And Sam, if ever a pass play was set up by the run, that was it. If you noticed how long they took, Eric Black checked off at the line of scrimmage. Very seldom do you see high school teams check off at the line of scrimmage, but the type of coverage that Cherry Creek gave him, he, Eric Black, checked off, and there was an opening and threw the slant in pass for a score. Well, it's hard to believe right now, but DJ quickly out in front, 13 to nothing, as Pepe Howe will put it up, and it's blocked. So Pepe Howe has the kick blocked, and it was blocked by Mark Hollinger. That's only the fourth extra point he's missed all year out of 48 tries. That's an amazing statistic right there. So we are now 9.25 to go in the first half here at All City Stadium. Thomas Jefferson, 13, and Cherry Creek, nothing. We'll be back after this. Like Pickoff comes down to Salazar in the end zone, and he will down it there. So Cherry Creek will start from their 20-yard line. And at this point, Sam, I think they have got to establish something on offense. I think they have to move the ball either running or throwing the football, but uh, they don't have real great field position, but uh, momentum may be a big factor here right now with that type of lead, Ron. Well, let's see what Cherry Creek can do with it. Ted Dorrance, the senior quarterback, brings them out. The handoff goes right up the middle, and it's Salazar, and it's not very much, maybe a yard or two. Fisher and Marr in there, and Cherry Creek just having troubles. I don't believe they have a first down yet. Now, any time now, Ron, with the, the type of quickness that they have in the Cherry Creek backfield, that Tassone or, or Salazar could break something, give them a first and ten. They need one badly. Dane Ingham, who's been brilliant for TJ as a, as a uh, rusher, right in there at middle linebacker right now. Second down, Dorrance rolls to his left, hands it off, maybe a yard or two to Mark Hollinger, and that's about it. They're out maybe to the 25. We'll have to call it a third and five. Sam, they did change their offense in the middle of the season. Early on, uh, they went to the power eye throughout uh, most of the early part of the season. Dorrance was hurt. Uh, Tassone was hurt. And when they came back in midseason, they changed some things. They've moved some things around. They're trying to get the ball outside here, and, and I think that's what they're going to have to do. Third and five. They're in the wishbone. It's pitched out, and it's outside. They may get a block. It's out I think we got a first down. We do. It comes about to the 40-yard line, and it's Mark Hollinger who gets all the way out to the 45-yard line before he's brought down by Jan Keith Gatewood. So Cherry Creek has their first first down of the ball game. Nifty pitch by the uh, quarterback. Yeah, that ball was riding on uh, the back shoulders there for a couple seconds. But uh, as I said, I think they have to get outside. Well, they did that time. They've got themselves a first down. Out at the 42 yard line. Handoff now right up the middle, and as he stuck right away by TJ, no gain on the play. Dave Kemet made the hit. Ron, what Cherry Creek's trying to do, they're unbalanced there to the left with the power eye, and they're running right with their strength, and uh, TJ really came up with some big defense right there. Well, Kemen, a great hit and a loss of two in the play. Second down and 12 for Cherry Creek in the wishbone. The handoff now is fake, and he will roll out. Doris got a man downfield. He's caught, and he's caught downfield by Scott Moore. He'll go into the end zone for a touchdown as he beat Jenkins Gatewood. Do we have any flags? I don't think so. And it is a touchdown to Scott Lure. What a play. Oh, it was, and they threw it. Gaywood, a man who had five interceptions this year, looked like almost he was in a position to intercept there, but he fell down. He was in position, but I thought Dorrance ran the bootleg, did a good job, threw the ball deep, and, uh, and a great play, well executed by Dorrance. Beautiful play. Dorrance, I thought, was almost going to be sacked back there. He made a nice play, a nice fake, then he rolled out to his right, and it looked like Jenkins Keith Gaywood had good coverage on Lure. But he made the catch. Touchdown. Cherry Creek back in this one now at 13 to 6. And Bill Goldie will try and get the extra points. Steve Berlin will put the ball down. Goldie, a line drive off the crossbar. No good. And that one can hurt. Because they only get the six points in the score now. 13 to 6. TJ with 721 to go in the first half. 13-6 TJ. We'll be back in just a minute. A 55-yard touchdown pass 
to Scott Luer as he got behind the defense. Gatewood fell down to help things out. And among all the other unusual aspects of this game so far, Sam, two of the best kickers in the state, two missed extra points. And that's something, two great kickers. We get one blocked and one missed. Okay, more times than not, some crazy things decide championship games. Here's the kick. Looks like Calvin Price will take it on about his own, too. He steps back into the end zone, runs out to 10, to 15, to 20, and he is banged down at about the 19-yard line by Keith Fitz. Uh, Ron, remember we talked in pregame about a conservative ball game and a state championship, and here we are in two quarters and three touchdowns and exciting football here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any conservatism today. It's been a fun game. Good wide open, a lot of offense. TJ now, they've had dead the ball twice, scored two touchdowns. See what they can do in their third possession. Eric Black, the junior quarterback, had a good day. The handoff to Ingram up the middle. He bangs it out to about the 21 yard line where Mike Elkins makes the tackle off a of right guard. So let's give him about two yards, call it second and a nine. You get the feeling watching this game that the team that scores last. That might be, Ron. It may be that situation. Fred said that in the paper this week. Well, Fred knew what he was talking about. Second down, called a long eight. As Eric Black, Cherry Creek now has seven people up in the line of scrimmage. Black hands it off right up the middle. Goes to Ingram. And he gets about, I make that day, he goes about two yards after the 24. We've got a man down for Thomas Jefferson. And I think it is Dane Ingram who is down. I think you're right. Uh, he is being screened from us now as uh, the team doctor and a couple of coaches race down to the field. We hate to see a, any type of injury like this, Sandy, but be such an important football player for Thomas Jefferson, starting fullback. I bet they're leading tackler on defense, and hope he just had the wind knocked out of him. Well, let's hope so, because he's had a brilliant first half up until now. 6.08 to go here, first half. 11 carries, 79 yards already for Ingram. And the good news is Ingram is up and now jogging off the field under his own power. He looks okay. Hopefully he'll be back in there soon. So Ingram comes out. Replaced in there by Rod Booker, 5'8", 172 pound senior. Carried it 18 times this year for 86 yards. Third down, about five. Cherry Creek, a lot of people up on that line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Day. Day is hit at about the 25, scrambles maybe to the 26. Do we have a fumble? Cherry Creek hits. Yes, if it's fumble, Cherry Creek has recovered. The recovery, Corey Helm, now handing left in. 6'5", 195 pound senior. We get, gentlemen, our first turnover, our first big break of the afternoon. And Sam, how quickly the momentum shifts. Great uh, momentum here for Cherry Creek. Anytime you turn the ball over there, I think they're a type of team that always in the past they could take advantage of a turnover like this. Well, they've got the ball first and 10 on the 25-yard line. What an opportunity for Cherry Creek. Tie this one right back up. We've now got a timeout. Cherry Creek will take a timeout. Like what they see. Looked like, Ron, they had a little confusion what type of set that they wanted to be in, so the Cherry Creek coaches called timeout. And you don't want to make a mistake and get a five-yard penalty, a delay a game when you have the ball on the 25-yard line. I think especially after a big turnover like that, Sam, you wouldn't want to be trying to call a play from the wrong formation, have possibly another turnover. You don't want to ruin the chance that they've made for themselves with a fumble recovery down here. Well, I tell you who made the call. It looked like Ted Dorrance, the, the Cherry Creek quarterback, a good leader who, who could take it on his initiative to see that they were getting behind, and he called the timeout. Well, here's some good news. Dane Ingram, who's been all over the field, getting ready to go back in on defense. He's a player. He does a great job. They there really need him here on defense. So we're about ready to go now. Cherry Creek, after the turnover, Corey Helm recovers the fumble by the junior Lloyd Day. Cherry Creek in business at the TJ25. The wishbone backfield. Ted Dorrance hands it off right up the middle, plowing, bullying his way out is Brian Salazar, and he's down to about the 20-yard line, where Scott Fisher makes the tackle. So give Salazar five, call it second down, and five. 
Salazar has been a big man for them this year. Uh, Sam, he came in early. John just soon became injured and uh, picked up the slack. And play right right there. Good Salazar had great leg drive. He had three guys on hanging on him, and he made yardage. Second down and five. Salazar, the deep back in this formation. The handoff this time is to the up back. That is John Tassone. The stone down very close to the 20. Give him about four to the 21. It'll be a third down and one. John Tassone fighting for every yard he can get. Spencer Ritchie, one of those Thomas Jefferson defenders in on the tackle. Third down short. Spencer Ritchie, another player going both ways. Slot back on offense. Cornerback on defense. If you watch that run there, Johnny has great quickness. He almost broke that, and that could be the difference if he could break one like Lloyd Day, and they'll both match up that way. Big play here, Sam. Third and one for Cherry Creek. They have to get to the 20. The handoff, and there will be no handoff. Quarterback Ted Darns will keep it. He's got a first down as he rolls up. It's down to about the 18-yard line. And a first down for Cherry Creek. Called the 13-yard line. Check that. So Cherry Creek now, a first down inside the 15. Do we need the L there? Darns brings him out, first and 10, from the 13th. Darns hands off to his left, this one going to Tassone. He's down the 10-yard line. Before he sits down there. Scott Schroeder with the initial hit for the Spartans. What Cherry Creek's doing is they're unbalanced to the left with two of their strong backs up, and they're just running the dive, and they got all their strength to their left and powering it right in there. Well, they powered it right down to the 10-yard line. They've got about a second down and seven. TJ brings out Rod Booker. Second down, seven. Lawrence rolls to his left. He'll keep it. He's inside the 10, down to about maybe the seven. He is hit down in there by Scott Schwader. Schwader, a pretty active game from middle linebacker. Now, Sam, you have third and five at the eight yard. I think they got to run option. They got to get outside some way. The Cherry Creek, uh, the TJ defense is pretty stiff in the middle. I look for some type of outside play. Well, TJ, of course, early in the first quarter on their first drive had the same problem. First and goal took them four plays to get in. Let's see what Creek does. Third and about five from the eight. Lawrence. Pitches out. This one to uh, Salazar. Salazar inside the five. He finally hit down in there by Jane Keith Gatewood and Dane Ingram. Ingram with the hit. And let's see where they mark it. I think they're going to mark it just inside the five, Sam, which would leave them a little bit short. It looks like they've got a spot. Yes, they do. Right on the five-yard line. We're doing up a fourth down. Really impressed with Salazar's, Salazar's leg drive, Ron. He really carried it up. Fourth down and two. Big play in the ball game as Cherry Creek will go for it. Scott Luer, who caught the big touchdown pass, is split wide to the left. Everybody else in the backfield. Lawrence needs two yards on fourth and two. The handoff goes to Salazar right up the middle. He is hit and brought down in there. But does he have it? The TJ players look like they might have stopped him the way they're jumping around out there. Well, it'll all depend where they mark it. I, it looks like it's parked just inside the floor. It's going to be nice. They'll have to measure it. TJ's defense is awful quick run and they're very scrappy and I tell you I'm really impressed the way they swarmed the football today. Well, I think they've done it and they have. They have stopped Jerry Creek on down inside the five yard line. So a big defensive stand by TJ. That's right and Ron the two men you alluded to a minute ago, Dane Ingram, Gatewood, the cornerback. Uh, the big man on that particular series. How much does that mean, Sam, to a team to get stopped like well, that? Well, I think it really, it really hurts your momentum and makes you a little bit depressed when you don't get into any type of football team that's going to make you a little upset. Well, now TJ's got a hammer out of first few first downs. They got the ball on the four-yard line. Black hands it off right up the middle. I believe that one is the day. He's out to about the six yard line. The big factor here, Ron, is the time with 142 on the clock. If Cherry Creek can get the ball back, they'll still have time to score. That'll be the big difference right here by not scoring. So obviously it's imperative or very important for TJ to at least get a first down here. Ball's out to about the seven. Second down and about seven. Eric Black has done the job at quarterback for TJ. 
The handoff goes to Ingram, or Day, Day bounces off one man, another man, look at oh. Day, as he bounces out to about the 16-yard line. And it was Keith Pitts on the hit, but what a run by Lloyd Day as he just bounced off people. And that gets him right out of the hole, doesn't it? Boy, did Lloyd Day accelerate through that hole, but Keith Pitts put a hit on him, and that was a great high school football play by both people. Really impressed with Day again, Ron, the way he gave him that first and ten. Well, Day and Ingram in that backfield have been doing the job. 13-6 TJ, less than a minute to go now. 55 seconds on the clock running. First down, first and 10 at, the, at TJ's own 15. Black now will hand that off to Day, the junior. He's tripped up on about the 17. And he was tripped up by Corey Helm, the fine left end. Clock now rolling. We're inside 40 seconds. And Cherry Creek is not trying to stop it, so this may be the last play coming up that we'll see in this first half. Under 30 seconds now as Eric Black brings him out. Dane and Ingram have gone all the way in the backfield. Spencer Ritchie the slot back. High formation, Cherry Creek stunning. this tape we will not have halftime interviews i'm sorry for this delay we will join this game in the third quarter thank you and the cape really dominated 198 yards on 32 plays to just 116 for cherry creek on 15 plays and over half of that yardage came around on that one big pass play from uh dorance to lure and if they are without that play they're two touchdowns Fine. Yeah, I would say without that play, it would look awfully uh, bad for Cherry Creek. Sam, you've played against them many times, down by seven points with a half of football to go. What do they have to do differently in the second half to win this football game? What I think Cherry Creek's going to have to do, Ron, is maybe open the ball up a little bit, open their attack up, maybe throw a little bit. It's not that cold. They can throw the ball like they did on that one bootleg. I think they got to get the ball outside to Salazar and to Johnny Tassone. He has great speed. But the thing that's very shocking, Ron, is that they've only had the ball 15 times, and they're a, a ball control team, and it's reversed on them, which, which is very shocking. And then, of course, TJ dominating the offense with 32 plays. So I think Fred is going to have to open up his attack a little bit, or if not, they may get some type of break, a fumble, an interception, and they're very good at taking advantage of that. Except for late there in the year. that attack. last one. You know, I think one of the surprising things, too, is that, as one of the Cherry Creek coaches was telling you, and that is that TJ came out and split the back, something they haven't seen all year, and I think most of us felt that TJ, would, a lot of their offense would depend on the pass. They have basically dominated this game by just running Ingram and day wide. I mean, Ron, they've moved the ball on him very well. you got to give credit to, to Coach Herman Mose to do something like this. You know, you play 13 ball games, you go, you know, what you've done well all year. He must have seen something in the film, that was, was, when they exchanged films this week, he must have seen something that he had to go to split back and run the dive on Cherry Creek. And that's where they moved the ball pretty well on the dive and, of course, to the option outside. Well, it's been very effective. They jumped out to a 13-6 to league. Sandy pointed out the first half. It's a good point. We've seen two extra points missed. There's a seven-point ball right now. I was talking with Sam at halftime about what happens if Cherry Creek scores late in the game. Coach's nightmare. you got a tough decision to make. Ron, I started thinking it out myself. You know what would happen? They score at 12, 13. Early in the ball game, maybe you should kick. 
but yet I don't know. Fred is very hungry for a state championship, probably more than Herman most, because you know Herman has been in the playoffs, but of course not as much as Fred. I think maybe Fred might jump right on it and go for two anytime they score, because he needs this type of victory. And because Fred is so hungry, and because Fred has been here for so many years and hasn't won, does that change his coaching philosophy at all? Maybe you try something that normally you wouldn't try because he thirsts so bad for that state championship. I don't think coming down about the 15-yard line, Cherry Creek with the upman brings it out to about the 28-29 yard line. So Cherry Creek will have good field position to start this drive off. Just in the outside the 30-yard line, about the 29 and a half. John Tassone will return that kickoff, Ron, and he's one they really have to get going. They gotta, they gotta spring him loose sooner or later. He just has outstanding speed. Well, let's see if they can get him sprung loose. First and 10 from the 29th. Ted Norris, the senior quarterback, hands the ball to Tassone, going to his right, 30, 35, out to about the 37-yard line before he sits down there by Jane Keith Gatewood. So Tassone quickly, as Sandy and Sam both points out, gets the ball, takes it from the 29 to the 37, a gain of eight. What you want on first down, a good first down play. What they the did, Ron, they ran away from their strength. They gave power eye to the left and countered him back and brought him back the other side. Second down and three for Jerry Creek. Tassone, a pickup of seven. The handoff this time goes right up the middle. That one going to Hollinger. He maybe got a yard at the most. And he'll set up a third down play. Scott Schwader on the hit, the middle linebacker. Third down, Sam called a long two right here. You want my call? Okay. Let's go power formation. Power play or some type of option play. Okay. Let's go option play. Option play. Sam calls for the option on third and two. It's a handoff. It's a stone off right tackle. First down, breaks away into the clear to the midfield. John Tassone is getting on track here early in the second half as he's had two big plays, finally brought down by Jeff Liddy, the right outside linebacker. Tassone, a pickup of 16 yards in TJ territory at the 49 yard line. And both of you hit it right in the head. They had to get Tassone on track. It looks like that's exactly what they're trying to do. First and 10 for Cherry Creek on the move now, just inside the 49. Hand off again to Tassone. Pulling down to the 40-yard line, a flag down, though, in the Cherry Creek backfield. The zone gets it down to about the 39, and we've got a hold on Cherry Creek to wipe that one out. Funny, Sam, I was just going to mention that offensive line seems to have that little extra spring in their step. I think what they've done at halftime, no adjustments. They just talked about coming off the ball. They're coming off the ball, and they're giving the ball to Johnny a little bit more, Johnny Tassone, and he's really accelerating and getting up field. Well, that one hurts. 15 yards. Back to the 37-yard line. They set up first and 25 from the 37 yard line. Ron, we're going to have to see some type of pass or a screen or a draw, which they do real well, Cherry Creek. Okay, first and 25 from the 37 in motion at the zone. Back goes Durant looking to pass, taking a deep drop. The rush is on. The screen is up to Salazar, but what a hit! Right there by T.J. Davis West, the right quarterback who stuffed out that screen and brought down Salazar at the 35 yard line. The screen was set, Durant went back, the rush came on, but David West is right there. And Sam, you called for a screen pass, and obviously uh, David West either must have heard you or anticipated the same thing. Well, we know Cherry Creek's offense and defense real well, but I'm very impressed the way those people are hitting in the brown shirts, the way they swarm around the football. Loss of two, Sam. Second, 27 from the 34. Tassone on the counter is pulled down behind the line of scrimmage before he can hand off Dave Kenman, the right tackle, 5'11", 171-pound junior, as Cherry Creek now going backwards as Durant pulled down to 32. Cherry Creek now facing a third and third. And Sam, they came out, took the kick, that appeared to uh, that was some momentum, but all of a sudden they were in a hole. I don't think they can climb out. Ron, they're doing two things. They're beating themselves. One with the penalty and one a missed assignment. And number 73 came in and threw them for a loss. They're beating themselves. Okay, third and 30, out from the 32, in motion is Salazar. Back to pass goes Durant. He wants to go long. Throwing to his right, incomplete. Jan Keith Gatewood, great coverage on Scott Luer. Most of the two that were involved in the touchdown pass when Luer beat Gatewood. That's Time Gatewood all over Lure, incomplete fourth down. Cherry Creek has to punt. What they tried to do there, Ron, they set up the flea flicker. They were going to throw the ball at the stone and he was going to pitch it out. They were set up for it and they've been very successful in running the flea flicker. Another good defensive series by TJ as they've been, but they do not break. Calvin Price 
is back with Spencer Ritchie to receive the punt. Mark Hollinger will do the punting. Hollinger punts, end over end punt. Calvin Price calling for a fair catch, and he makes it at about the TJ 36 yard line. So TJ fights off a Cherry Creek first here early, and I don't know if, if the momentum has swung back to TJ. I guess we'll find out. Ron, early in the ball game, or before I talked a lot about Cherry Creek, of course, I know them a lot better. The things that TJ is doing, they're dominating the game defensively, and they've been able to move the ball almost every time that they've had it. Well, they're going to start to move it now from their own 36-yard line. Eric Black, the junior quarterback, backs it and I. This time it's the handoff up the middle to Dane Ingram. He pulls it out to about the TJ 39-yard line before the middle of that Cherry Creek defense. The strong point brings him down. Mike Adams and Kyle Schmidt both in there on the tackle. Out to the 39. Gain of about three, second down and seven. I don't think they'll go to the air, which we've all been waiting for them to do that a lot. I bet they'll still give the ball to the two big backs. I mean, the little back back there, Lloyd Day. Lloyd Day, that little back. In the eye, along with Dane Ingram. Ingram the up back. Eric Black calling out the signals. Turns, hands it off to Ingram. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage and brought down at the 40-yard line. Mike Elkins, the middle linebacker, stood Ingram right up in the 39 and made the hit. It looked like they had a little counter trap on there, Ron, and nobody came down on the linebacker, and he, uh, Elkins, made the play. Third down and six, Sam. You want to get in the business of calling a play? Well, I tell you what, I'm enjoying it being up here and not being in that pressure situation. <laughs> I would go with some type of pass if they do, or they're going to get the ball to Lloyd Day on some type of option. How about for a pass? Okay. A passer option, those two players. Lloyd Day in the eye. Third down and about six. Day gets the ball. He's at the 40, 45, 46. What is he just busted out to about the 47 yard line? Nick Sam and Sandy, extra effort. Might have gotten him the first down. The Perkins and Dorrance, the two defensive backs, make the hit. Yes, it is. A first down for the brilliant junior Lloyd Day. Ron, that is the second time they've ran power away from strength, and that's what confused me a little bit. I thought they would go to their strength. They ran power off tackle, and Lloyd Day really hit up in there. Lloyd Day hits that hole quick. Jay Diedrich now wide to the right, along with Spencer Ritchie. Both of them split to the right. Backs now split. Day and Ingram. The handoff will fake the day. It's going to be pitched to Ingram. Ingram rounds it up to the 45, 50, 40, 35. Eric Black did a beautiful job of taking the line, freezing those linebackers, and getting the ball to him. They got a hold, but I think it's an excellent call. I say Eric Black was looking to coach Moe, trying to communicate for a play, and it looked like Eric Black wanted the counter option. They went away from Day and got the ball to Ingram. Great call, well executed, and too bad we got a hold here, Ron. Well, it wipes out an awfully nice play by TJ, and that'll bring the ball all the way back to the Thomas Jefferson 37-yard line. Boy, third and a half a mile, huh? Boy, it really is now. Oh, excuse me, first down, Ron. Well, it kind of evens out exactly what happened to Cherry Creek. They had the same problem. A hold cost them uh, their drive as they had moved across midfield on TJ. So the ball back at the 37. TJ has to go to Cherry Creek 43 to get a first down. So it's about first down and 19. Back goes Black. He'll hand it off deep. To Lloyd Day, twisting, turning. He's across the 40, out to about the 43, where Mike Adams, right there, makes the hit along with Dave Cacchetti, the right side linebacker, 5'10, 180 pound senior. Dave bulls it out to about the 44 to make it second and 13. The type of play they had there, Ron, they had two wide outs and they tried to sprint draw with Lloyd Day, just base block it up front and let him run to daylight, and he can run to daylight. Once again, Diedrich and Spencer split wide to the right, the backs in the eye, Ingram the up back. Second down, about 13 to go. Black rolls out to his left. He wants to pass. He looks downfield. He's got Day open. Day's complete. He's at midfield. Hits a block to the 45, the 40, 35, 30 yard line where he's finally hit down by Mark Hollinger, the cornerback. What a pretty play as it was Day taking the pass at midfield, bringing it all the way down to the Cherry Creek 27 yard. And he got around Mike Elkins, who's not a bad linebacker on the open field. That was the same play off a sprint draw. They faked him Lloyd Day, let him get in the open field. Eric Black executed it well. Great fake to Lloyd Day. The receivers cleared the area, and he threw the ball to Lloyd Day. And just two great skilled people doing a heck of a job today. TJ throwing when they have to and making a 
count. First and ten from the Cherry Creek 27-yard line. Spencer Ritchie now in the back. They're going to throw again. Black this time is looking downfield. It is caught for a touchdown by Andre Martin, the tight end. 27-yard touchdown pass to Andre Martin, the tight end. And all of a sudden, CJ has a 19-6 lead against Cherry Creek in this 4-8 high school championship game. And Sam, Andre Martin, a man we have not called his name all day. There he is for maybe the biggest touchdown in this game. What happened, Ron, they got in the power eye and they ran the sprint draw fake again to Lloyd Day. The secondary came up and he was wide open, touchdown. And that's a big touchdown right there. The extra point by Pepe Howe is up and good. And with 6.05 to go in the third quarter from All City Stadium, it is 21 to 6, or 20 to 6, in favor of Thomas Jefferson. We'll be back in 30 seconds. It's Santa Claus back at All City Stadium with Ron Zappola and Sam Pagano. 6.05 to go in the third quarter. TJ has scored again. They lead 20 to 6. Well, there's the kickoff. It's going up the middle for Jerry Creek. A good return out to close to the 40-yard line. John Tassoon getting out in the good field position, and if there's ever a must drive where they've got to get points, this one's it. This is it. Time's running out on them, and not only running out on them, but they got to get something generated here with 5.58 left in the third quarter. Well, let's see what Cherry Creek can do. Down 20 to 6, inside of six minutes to go. Ball first and 10 on the 42 yard line. They're in the wishbone. Dorrance right there hands it off to the first man, which is Salazar. He's out to about the 44, pickup of about two. Hit down by Scott Schwader. Pick up a two, second down and eight. Looks like they got one injured player. He's a little slow getting up. I can't get his number, Ron. TJ does have somebody down. It looks to be Scott Fisher, Ron, although we don't have a clear view of his number at this point. He is being treated at the middle of the field. Getting back, uh, we were talking during the break, Sam, about the touchdown pass, and, and you were making the point that uh, Herman Motes has got a pretty fair game plan. I think Herman has put an excellent game plan. Jerry Creek at their own 44-yard line. In motion is Jay Scribbling. Dorrance will keep it on his own. He's at the 42, and he's about the 47, and he's hit down there by Dane Ingram, the man who's been the big gun on offense for TJ makes the tackle down the 47-yard line. You know, Ron, we talked about Ingram going both ways. He's got so much momentum. He's so excited. The, the adrenaline's going in him. He's not tired at all. And a young man like this in a championship game, temperature's nice and cool. He could play three ball games today. Third down and about six for Cherry Creek at their own 46-yard line. Ted Durant, hands off to the zone, running to his right, gets a block, he's at midfield, across midfield, down to the 45, about the TJ 43-yard line, it'll be good for a first down, as John Tassone is getting untracked here in the second half for Cherry Creek, Dane Ingram again, in on the hit, John Tassone effective in the three runs he's had this half. And he's got to be effective, I think, Sam, if they're going to get back in this game, they don't like to throw, but they are for That's the same play they used in first down, and the same play they used when they had the 15-yard penalty, power sweep to the right. First and 10 from the 43 yard line. Durant hands it off again to the zone. He's down inside the 40, maybe at the 39 yard line. Dane Ingram again, the last man off that pile. He looks real good, Ron. He's bouncing around. He's getting his defensive signals from Coach Motes. And uh, this is a great opportunity that Cherry Creek has, you know, the ball in this type of position. And this is probably their best field position besides that early fumble they had in the first half. 4-10 to go in the third quarter. Cherry Creek down 20-6. to six. They need some points. Second down and seven. In motion now is Stribling. Durant will hand it off to Salazar. He won't get anything. He has stopped right up there. Jay Diedrich from the safety position made the hit on Stribling. Gain maybe of a yard. Cherry Creek just having trouble, Sam consistently moving down the field. They sure are. I think they're going to have to maybe again here, it's third and long, and uh, they're going to have to maybe go outside or give the ball to the Giants to stone. Well, let's see what they do. It's third and a long five. Counter? It's a counter play. It's the stone. He's at the 40 inside the 35. And let's see where they'll mark this ball. It'll be very important. 
Matt Cunningham in for Scott Fisher made the hit. I think they marked it where they'll get a first down. Ball's down about the 32, and yes, it is. Good for another Cherry Creek first down. Johnny Stone has really been strong on this drive, Ron. Yes, he has. He was strong on the first drive that was stopped by penalties and a sack. First and 10 from the 32. The handoff goes right up the middle at Salazar. He's inside the 30, down to about the 27-yard line. If you'll notice the defense that TJ's playing, they got about eight or nine guys up. They're not playing pass at all, Ron. Let's look at the defense. When they set it, maybe they're doing the same thing. They're just trying to stop the run. Well, maybe it's time for Cherry Creek to take advantage of that, Sam. Let's see. Second down and five. <laughs> From the wishbone, the handoff goes to the zone, running right, gets a block, he's inside the 25, maybe inside the 20-yard line. Johnson Zone down to about the 19-yard line, and it'll be good for another Cherry Creek first down as Johnson Zone is really starting to rumble here in the third quarter. And they're picking up where they left off on that last drive before they sustain the holding. They're out of the huddle. They're running their plays awful fast, and they really got the momentum going. Well, that's a mark of a well-coached team. They're down by two scores. They need the time on their side. The handoff this time goes to Scribbling. Not much. It was a dive over the middle. Down to about the 16, maybe 17-yard line. Call it a pickup of about two. Dave Kemen, the right tackle, 5'11", 171 pounds junior, in there on the hit. Second down and about nine. Give him a yard. Sam, you made the point that TJ defensively playing up on the line of scrimmage. You just wonder. They are. Terry Creek will try and throw again. They are again, Ron. They're all up. <laughs> down about nine. Durant Spakes is a naked reverse. Rolling to his left. He's got room, but he's hit down. Pretty hit by Jeff Leedy, the right outside linebacker, on about the 16-yard line. The play that looked like it might be more successful than it turned out to be. It looked like it was a good call early, Ron, but they have such great quickness. Those people reacted so quick, and uh, I believe they lost yardage on that play. Durant made the fake right, just like we've seen Craig Morton do many times, and then roll it left. But Jeff Leedy was there to meet him. They're unbalanced again, Ron. Third down, seven yards to go. Back. In the wishbone, Durant looks it over. The handoff to Johnson Stone, running right. He's hit the line of scrimmage, pulls his way down inside the 10 yard line. Johnson Stone running hard as he was hitting the 15, pulls it inside the 10. Now yeah, they've got to go, don't they? Oh, they'll definitely go for it. The thing about it, they're running the same play. A fake fullback gives Johnny the ball to the power sweep to the outside, and he's running awful hard. TJ now putting some beef up front on this fourth and uh, two. This from the they ten do yard. well, Ron. They play defense well here. So they'll have to here on fourth and two. The handoff goes up the middle to John Tassone. I think he's got the first down. He looks to, depends on where they mark it. And it is a first down for Jerry Creek at the eight-yard line. That's a play they had to have. I think the ball game is just about over if they stop in there. A good guy to give the ball to, a guy that accelerates and really hits up in there, and that's the guy to call his number, John Tassone. First and goal, ball is resting near the seven-yard line. Jerry Creek down 26, handoff goes right up the middle to Salazar. He gets a couple yards. Oh, back maybe to the six-yard line, maybe the seven, as he was hit down by Scott Schwader. Pick up maybe a one. Well, that's a linebacker hit, Ron. He came up there and really put a, a great lick on him. That's the type of play that, that Randy Gratishar is so great on goal line defense, and that's what they're doing. And Gratishar, I'll tell you, he needs the help from those defensive linemen, the submarine, to make those plays. Second down and goal from the seven. That roll out left, hand off to the zone. He's at the five, maybe across the five to the four, but that's as far as he'll go. Scott Schwader in there again on the hit. Both teams, Sam, have had trouble moving the ball in inside the 10 yard line. And we are at the end of the third quarter here at All City Stadium. After three quarters, with Jerry Creek threatening the score, Thomas Jefferson 20 and Jerry Creek 6, back in 30 seconds. Sandy Clough and Sam Pagano with Sam now, helping those Cherry Creek coaches trying to come up with a play here on third down and five. And it's it's imperative, I think, Sam, that Cherry Creek get in the end zone. I'm just trying to get some information to, to help us out. I think they'll give the ball to number 43, Johnny Tassone. They just uh, went back and rehuddled. I think that they want to make sure the officials are trying to set the chains. He's over center. Third and goal from the five. He'll give it to Tassone. At the five, the three. He's hit, pulls his way down inside the two. And he's hit down in there by who else? 
Dane Ingram, along with Jane Keith Gatewood. John Tassone is not getting up. Oh, there he is. They pulled him up. He's okay. But that ball is resting on about the two. So, Coach, how do you want to call, Ron? This is yours. <laughs> I've been in this situation too many uh, times. You, you would have given it to Bill Walski last year. So, get on in there. <laughs> Fourth and goal at the two. Big play in the football game. Cherry Creek needs a score right here. Durant will hand it off to Tassone. Hit it to one. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. John Tassone from two yards out. Bangs it over the right tackle. And we've got a football game again. As Cherry Creek is on the board, TJ's lead now cut to 20 to 12. Boy, that's good running, isn't it? Old cross buck there. They put any over there. They busted in there and, and, and got him up to 12 points. Got to go for two here. I'll tell you what, that's pretty gutsy play calling and execution when it's third and goal from the five with the game on the line, knowing you got to get in there. I guess I'm wrong here, Ron. They're going to kick it and, well, and try to make it 13-20. I thought Fred would go maybe for the two. Sam is learning life is different in the press box and it is down the field because Fred Tassone will go for the single extra point here. Bill Goldie, the kick, it's up and it's good. And Cherry Creek has cut the TJ lead. TJ 20 and Cherry Creek 13. Sam, I know that you felt and said all along that, that you thought they'd go for two. What do you think Fred was thinking? Then? I think that maybe there's a lot of time in the game, and then when he scores the next time, that he could go for the two then and not put him in such a position to be such behind right now, and there's more time. But the problem is there, if you miss it with 11 and a half minutes to go and you're down 20-12, then you know you have to score at least two times again. That's true, Ron. 17 plays, 58 yards, first sustained march of the afternoon for a score by the Bruins. And the one thing the Bruins have done in this third quarter is untrack John Tassone. Let's take 10 seconds now for station identification. Kong and deep, coming down to Calvin Price on his 7. At the 10, at the 15, the wedge breaks the 20. He's out to the 25, where he's hit down right there by Dave Cacchetti, the linebacker. So Price brings it out to the 25. First and 10 for TJ. Ron, I think it's going to be the first time where TJ's offense, with 11-17 left in the fourth quarter, this is where they have to move the ball and get first and 10. And let's see now if Cherry Creek's defense can stiffen up and then turn around and maybe possibly win the game or tie it up. Well, now it gets real interesting. Every first down is very important for Thomas Jefferson. They've got the ball first and ten on their own 26 yard line. Eric Black, the junior quarterback, the backs in the eye. Both receivers wide to the left. The handoff goes to Ingram. We'll make that day. Day up the middle, out to about the 28. Pick up a baby two, second down, and eight for Thomas Jefferson. 10.40 remaining. What is Fred Tassone thinking about right now? Thinking side? right now he wants to play great defense and give T.J. that first punt of the ball game. I believe it will just be the first punt round. The Wood is not punted today. This is what they're looking for, to play stout defense and, and get a punt return maybe. Second down and eight. Spencer Ritchie now in that backfield. Along with Day and Ingram. Black the junior calls the signals. Ritchie comes in motion to the left. Black looking for a pitch. Bad pitch back to Day. A fumble. Jerry Creek may have it. Yes, they do. A big, big turnover. As Day fumbled the pitch, it was a bad pitch. Jerry Creek has recovered. Jared Rothschaper recovered it in the special event. And what a turnaround in this football game, Sam. The second big turnover that Jerry Creek has forced. And now, if they can pass it in, we got it again. I know Jerry Creek forced that fumble, Ron, but it's too bad. TJ has really been playing excellent offensive football. And I was just getting ready. I hope it's not a fumble or an interception that turns the game around. Take well, it here, Ron. Cherry Creek, first and 10 to 23. After the fumble, the handoff goes right up the middle of James Fiddling. He's inside the 20, down to about the 15. They got great momentum going now, Ron. They really do. Oh, well, they certainly do. Dan Ingram was on the tackle. Stribling took it down. They're going to mark it at the 16. It'll make it a second down and about four. The turnovers, more times than not, that's the story. Second down, about four. Ted Dorrance with the wishbone. The handoff again to Stribling. He's been right at the line of scrimmage. Turns to his left. Gets a couple yards down to about the 13. Big play right here, Ron. Third and four. I don't think that they're going to... Well, it's not as much. It's third and one. Third and about two. Yeah, third and one or two. They need a first and ten right here. Now probably they'll go with Johnny again. And the way he's running, he can get him the first and ten. But he has been the big man without a doubt in the second half. Mark Scott, the wide receiver, split wide to the right. In the wishbone. 
The handoff goes to John Tassan. I think he's got the first down. He banged it down close to the 10-yard line. Let's see where the officials mark it. Uh, John Tassone getting the big yardage for this Cherry Creek team in the second half. And it is a first down on about the 12 yard line. So they can, Sam, pick up another first down on this drive. They sure can, but uh, what, we're going to start talking about what's going to happen if they score. And then we're going to put some pressure on. Are we going to go for the kick or the two point play? Well, we'll be talking about that as soon as they score, if they do score. If they do. First and 10 from the 12. The ranch, the pitch out, it goes to Salazar, it's a 10, hit, down to about the 8, running hard, and he's close to the 5-yard line, about down at the 6. Great hit, Ron. Good hit. Aaron Bernstein on that hit, Ron, and uh, still pretty good running, though, by Salazar. He bounced off and got about four extra yards. All of a sudden, Salazar to Stone and Stripling, running the ball with some authority. Second down and seven yards to go. The handoff this time goes to Stone. He's got running room inside the five. Dane Ingram caught him at the five. They're starting to wear that defense down a little bit, Ron. They're coming off the ball, Cherry Creek. The backs are exploding into the line of scrimmage, and looks like Johnny might be down there on the five-yard line. Spencer Ritchie also was in the hit. John Tassone is down on one knee right now, not getting up. Let's hope he's okay. You know, Ron, he had a concussion last week in the Mitchell game, and of course he had some knee surgery early in the year, and uh, he's had some trouble during the course of the year. With the score, Thomas Jefferson 20 and Cherry Creek 13. First down the one-yard line. The handoff, fake. It'll be kept by Durant, and he gets to about the three, and I don't think he's got the first down. Looks to be about a yard short, Ron, at about the three-yard line with 7.20 left. It's fourth down, probably about a yard to go. They're going to measure it. Sam, we've had a handful of giant plays today for both teams. We have another one coming up now because I believe he's just a little bit short. In the wishbone, John Tassone in there, along with Jay Stribling and Brian Salazar. Stribling the up back. Clock starts, less than 7.20 to go, fourth and one. Stribling in motion to the left, John Tassone gets the call. He's got the first down, he's in for a touchdown, but there's a flag down. There is a flag down in the Cherry Creek backfield, which would lead you to believe, yes, it is an illegal motion call on Cherry Creek. And Sam and Sandy, what a big play, what a bad time for to have. Wide to the right, the wishbone backfield, Durant, fake, a naked reverse. He rolls left, has a man open in the end zone. But it's intercepted. It's picked off by Thomas Jefferson on the two yard line. David West makes the interception of the game. A super play by David West to kill the Jerry Creek threat. Doris had him open early. He just lobbed the ball. He should have got the ball a little quicker to him. The kid was open as soon as the ball was snapped. And then they would have great defensive play. They've been doing it all day, and they must have been doing it all year. Great defensive play. And, of course, Coach rolling to his left maybe couldn't get the ball off quite as quickly as he wanted. Well, that probably was quickly. a problem, Brett. Sandy he did have a problem with rolling to his left. That's another thought, Sam. If he just knocked the ball down, he would have had it to seven. He caught the ball, and they got it now on the one and a half. First and ten for TJ. Back up in their own end zone. The hands-off goes to Dave. He gets maybe a half a yard at the most. Out to maybe the two. And Sam still, Cherry Creek can get right back in it by stopping TJ without a first down. Where the ball is on the two-yard line with 6.54 left in the ball game. They have time if they can hold them here and get a good. And, and, and again, they haven't kicked the ball yet, TJ. No, they have. We got a man down for TJ. Let's see if we can pick out who it is. And yet he's still down. But look back there. Richie gets the ball. He's hit the goal line. Squirms his way out to the seven yard line. A fine bit of individual second effort by Spencer Richie. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage, Ron. Bounced off and got the yardage. Fine run by Spencer Richie, who at times lines up in the backfield and runs the football. Third down now, four for Thomas Jefferson. Sam, a big third down play. They need that first down. They'll probably go to the power and give it to the tailback here, Ron. Huh? Oh, 
on the signals to pitch out to Spencer Ritchie. He's got a block or make that Lloyd Day. Day out across the 10, out to about the 13. It'll be good for a Thomas Jefferson first down. Big you know first down, But a Ron, big huh? first down by Thomas Jefferson. Oh, even if they don't make another one, that at least uh, gives them a chance to punt from uh, their 10 or 15 yard line well, instead of the end zone. Right, Sandy. They have a little bit better position to kick the ball, but yet with six minutes right now, they could still run off a little time here with another first and 10. All TJ is thinking now is keep piling up those first downs and keep that ball on the ground. First and 10 from the 13. Day, Ingram, and Ritchie in the backfield. Ritchie the tailback. Here's the snap. The handoff goes to the first man, Ingram. Not much. Out to about maybe the 15 at the most. Pickup of about one or maybe two. Kyle Schmidt, the big left tackle, in on the hit. Big strong kid, Kyle Smith. I said earlier in the in the broadcast, Ron, he's a, a great heavyweight wrestler and he's done an outstanding job at Cherry Creek these last two years. Time now, Sam and Sam, starting to become a factor. 5.18 and the clock moving. TJ with a seven-point lead, 20 to 13. Second down, about eight to go on the 15-yard line. Eric Black, who's had a good ball game, calling the signals for TJ. He goes back, hands it off to Ingram. There's a hole of his left. Ingram out to the 20. Good open field tackle out there by Ted Dorrance, the quarterback. And we've got a flag down after the play. Would we get a late hit? I think, I think Sam, we've got a late hit. Schmidt got a little overzealous and uh, hit the ball carrier after he was down. Good tackle by Dorrance in the open field. Under a problem. Nice play that time. A little misdirection. Looked like it was going right, and they send Ingram to his left. Ted Dorrance, a fine hit, but then Schmidt piling on. TJ in business now at their own 37-yard line. We're under five minutes to go. Clock is moving. The handoff goes right up the middle of the day, and he gets out to about the 40-yard line. As quarterback Eric, Eric Black was tackled after the handoff. Must have been a very good fake. Day gets out just across the 40. Let's call it the 41, so pick up a four. Make it second down and six. I tell you, Sam, uh, along with a good execution, they've had almost flawless play calling, I'd say. A little misdirection oh, here, change of pace. There. Excellent calls, and except just that only one turnover is that one fumble here we had a little while ago. And they've got to be careful on those pitches. That caused the last fumble. Second down and six. Full house backfield. Richie the tailback. Ingram and Day up front. The handoff goes right up to Day. Day got real. He, or make that Ingram. He's on the midfield. Dane Ingram out the midfield, just pulling his way. The big fullback brings it all the way. To the top, to the uh, Cherry Creek 48-yard line, another first down. Ron, that's a very unusual play. All my years of coaching in high school, I haven't seen that a lot. It's like a counter trap. He steps right and comes back with the right guard, trapping over Larry Cherry Creek's left side. And that they've used that a couple of times. Outstanding play Coach Motes has in his attack. Well, it's working. And now the clock at 3.55. On the move is TJ grinding it out from their own goal line. Now to the Cherry Creek 48, all on the ground. Here's the handoff right up the middle. That time it goes to Day, and Day gets about two yards. A single and fumble. They're sick. The Cherry Creek kids kid. are singling, but we don't see the referee no. singling that. The Cherry Creek kids a little wishful thinking there. The referees did not signal fumble. Second down, about eight. You know, Ron, we've been in this situation, you know, the last couple of years with 326. You know what we'd be in? Two tight ends, be a full house back wheel, and we'd be giving it to our tailback and just trying to get first and tens and, and run some ticks off that clock. Yeah, I remember you. You'd have Wolski back there. You'd have all those big horses back there. All we do is keep running power eye and full back. There's a mistake. Oh, there's and that's a mistake. What, Ron, and that's what you don't want. You don't want a penalty to stop the clock. Illegal procedure. A man right guard, I think it was Martin Foster, for Thomas Jefferson, jumped before the snap. And that'll cost TJ five. That'll move it back across midfield. TJ will move it back to their own 49-yard line, make it second and 12. And more importantly, gets that clock stop with 3.09 to go. Good point, Sandy. Very important now because Jerry Creek needs that time. It'd be a gutsy call, second and long yardage. Are you going to throw the ball? No. You better just keep grinding it out. And, but I don't know. They've done some of the usual things today. <laughs> Sam, the fans would say fake it to one of those guys and go back and throw. But we'll see on second 12. Cherry Creek needs a big defensive play sooner or later. Second down 12. Black to hand off the fake. He'll now hand off to Day, the back, and he gets out to about the midfield. And that's about it. Lloyd Day squirming the midfield. Pick up a maybe three yards. If you notice, Lloyd Day is putting two hands around the football, the way those Cherry Creek backers are taking pretty good shots at him. And Lloyd Day, is being, he's a very well-coached young man. He's got both hands grasping the ball very tough right now, Ron. Well, Cherry Creek has called a timeout. 
242 to go. 20 to 13. And at this point, Sam Terry Creek just has to have a big play on defense. They need the, they need a big play third down, of course, right here. And then I'm sure TJ will punt the ball. Let me say this, though, Ron. In the past years and over the 16 years or 12 years or whatever I played against Terry Creek, they're very good at two-minute offense. They're one of the finest teams I've ever played against with a two-minute offense. So just keep that in mind in case they do get the ball back, that they've been awful good at moving the ball. But well, don't go away. We could be in for quite a finish here. TJ out in front of Cherry Creek, 20 to 13. Just heard Coach Pagano say that Cherry Creek can run that two-minute offense. They may definitely get their chance. It looks like this. TJ has the ball exactly on the 50-yard line, facing a third and 11. The clock is stopped. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. And right now, TJ would give about anything for a first down. Third and 11. We see the wideouts are split to the right. Ingram and Day in the backfield. Eric Black takes the snap, hands off to Lloyd Day, and he is blasted for a five-yard loss by, by Keith Pitts, the right side linebacker. Beautiful play, five-yard loss. Move it back to the 45. Fourth down, 16. T.J. will have the punt. Great hit by Pitts. And talking to Fred during the course of the year, he felt Pitts was his best linebacker out of the three. Will they try to block this punt? Oh, it looks like they got a lot of people up right here, Sandy. They got everybody up. They got nine up. First punt, they all oh, partially blocked. Partially blocked. Partially blocked. Picked up by Cherry Creek wide man. And Cherry Creek will have the ball on the DJ 48 yard line. Corey Helm picked up the football, Ron, and ran it back about five yards. And boy, they came flying. Sandy, the referee went for his flag. He had his, his hand on his hip pocket. But then when he, I think he noticed that they partially blocked the ball, that it's a, he's, a, he's a ball carrier. You can rough the kicker there. Oh, what a finish we've got set up. 2.07 to go. Cherry Creek down by seven. They've got the ball on the TJ 47 yard line. Plenty of time. They do have, I think, one timeout left. I didn't believe so, Ron. There's a two minute offense, Ron. Two minute offense. Durant will fake the handoff. He'll go back to pass. Looking downfield. Has time. He hits Salazar at the 40 yard line. He's dragged down to 35. So a good pickup of 13 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Durant to Brian Salazar. Now, Ron, a kicking game is really the turning point. You don't get a punt blocked with two men under almost 207. You have to make sure you, you do. don't get a punt blocked. And I'll tell you what, you got to give credit for Cherry Creek giving the big rush there. Salazar didn't get out of bounds. Clock moving inside of 150. First and 10 from the TJ 34 yard line. From the wishbone, Durant has him out. Durant hands it off right up the middle. This one to Jay Stribling down to the 30 yard line. Pulled down by Dane Ingram at the 30. Pickup of about three yards, called second and seven. The clock moving, a minute and 30 to go here in the final game from All City Stadium. Cherry Creek down by seven. If they can score, they'll have a chance to go for two and win the whole thing. Second down, seven yards to go. Scott Luer, wide to the left side. Durant goes back, looks for Luer, looks the other way. Throws, almost intercepted by Jane Keith Gatewood. He had a shot at it, Sam and Sandy. Tried to keep those, hand, those feet in bounds, or one foot in bounds. Couldn't hold on to it and fell out of bounds. It appeared as though he had it there for an instant. They've always made the big defensive play all day, and that looked like another big defensive play. With 113 left, Ron, look for them to come up with another great big defensive play. 113 to go. Oh, third and six. Cherry Creek on the TJ 30 yard line. They're down by seven points. The Rants will go back to pass. Rolls to his left. He's going to run. He's got time. It's the 30, 25, 20, 15. Hits down there. A great tackle at the 14 yard line. But it's a first down for Cherry Creek. Spencer Ritchie on the hit. And now Cherry Creek with a minute and four seconds to go. They stop the clock to move up to six. What an exciting ball game. First and ten from the TJ 14. They're going without a huddle, Ron, but what happened on that play? TJ had no contain. Their defensive end came inside. First and 10 from the 14. Durant goes left, hands it off to Stone. To Stone close to the 10 yard line before he is hit down. Looks like they're going to call a timeout, Cherry Creek. Well, 51 seconds to go. Cherry Creek now calls timeout. And guys, I don't think we could have scripted a better finish for this one. What you have to find out now, Ron, how many timeouts does Cherry Creek have left? Thank <laughs> you.
they got the big factor, Ron. Two timeouts with 51 seconds left in the game. Hey, they're in great shape now. They have the two timeouts. They're inside the 10, 51 seconds. Plenty of time, and they can do what they want. They got downfield amazingly, really with only that one pass, and you don't want to throw into that second during that's, those 30 interceptions. That's true, but we've been here before, and they, the, the guys in the brown shirts, the kids in the brown shirts from TJ have made great defensive plays. They've done it twice, once in the second quarter, once in the uh, fourth quarter. They have stopped Cherry Creek twice inside the five-yard line. Psychologically, you wonder if that's a fact. I think, yeah, I think there's only one Only one timeout, time Ron. Second down, about five yards to go. The ball's on the nine-yard line, 51 seconds left. Even with a timeout, Sam, if they run the right plays, the time really shouldn't be a factor. I don't think so. They're in good field position. The big play right now is to see how close they can get more to the first and ten instead of the touchdown right here. Okay. I'm glad I'm up here right now. <laughs> Let's see what they do. Second down and five for Cherry Creek. Down by seven points with 51 seconds to go. Durant will hand off to the zone. The zone is down to about the six-yard line. Cherry Creek's got to get a quick work without a huddle. The clock is at 43 seconds and moving. It'll be third down and about three. Third down and three for Cherry Creek. And now Cherry Creek calls a timeout. Sam, you have to wonder about that. I think they wasted about 10 seconds. They, before they, they got a little confused, Ron. They lined up, and then they decided to call the timeout. But whatever. If they want to be sure. This is down to the final. This may be the play of the game to get the first and 10. So maybe the kids were right. They lined up, but then they changed their mind. So I think there's enough time. So I, they did waste a little bit of time, but I think they want to get their composure and make sure they got the right play on. We'll double check it, but I believe that is their last timeout. Cherry Creek does not have any more timeouts. No timeouts. So if they run a play, Sam, and don't get in the end zone with 37 seconds to go and don't get out of bounds. The game's over. Well, they're in deep <laughs> trouble anyway. If they do make the first down, though, on this play, they could always kill a play, throw the ball, and stop the sure. clock. Sure. Good point, Sandy. They could just throw the ball away and stop that clock. 37 seconds to go. There is time for Cherry Creek. We got on. Third down and two. Ball in the six, all between the six and seven yard line. Sam, what do you do here? Tassone has been so successful in the second half. Do you give it to him? I go a counter. power play, counter or, or power, and give it to Johnny Tassone. Because Sandy's right. All you need is that first down, and you can stop the clock, throw one out of bounds. Third down and two from the six. They're at the line of scrimmage. Tassone in the full house back row. Tassone has it. He dives his way to the three yard line. Should be good for a first down. He did not score. Referees now signaling timeout to mark the ball. They've marked the ball. Clock is stopped with 32 seconds to go as they pull the chains up. First down, the ball between the two and three yard line. We are going to have a finish. Exciting, huh? All right, the clock has started. 30 seconds to go in the game. First and goal from the three. The Rams make it reverse. Rolls right. Hit the two down to the one yard line. He is not in. He is not in. The clock is moving. 20 seconds to go. Cherry Creek trying to line up. 17, 16, 15. They are lining up now. Second goal for the two. It'll be the last play of the game unless they throw it out of bounds. 10 seconds to go in the game. Durant rolls to his left. Looking. Throws in the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. It is caught for a touchdown in the end zone with four seconds to go in the game. A tremendous catch. Jeff Watson, the tight end. What do you do now? Let's go back to the play. It's the same play where he threw the ball short. It wasn't the bootleg. It was a sprint out. And Ted Dorrance made a great play and a great catch by Swanson. All right, we've got a timeout. Everybody on the field, in the stands, in their box, and gain their composure. It is TJ 20, Cherry Creek 19. A great clutch play by Durant, the same play they used in that last series, Sam, as you pointed out. This time he made the good pass to Swanson, he was open, the same play they tried before. All right, guys, there are four seconds left in the game. They have to go for the two-point conversion. I'm really getting the shivers right here, Ron, and awful nervous and got good. But you look across the field. There's Ted Dorrance with Jack Brookhart, Kenny Ratcliffe, and Fred Tassone. They've been together a long time, and here it is for the state championship. They're trying to make their call, and now it's just the Kenny Ratliff and Fred and Ted Dorrance, and they're out there deciding what they've done and come down with it. Hey, it's a two-point play, no it's question. It. What it comes down to, Sandy, is you I'm glad make, I don't make you this gotta, call. you got to make three yards to win the state championship. You make it, you win it, 
you don't, you lose. Uh, what, what a pass play. From one yard out, you run, wonder if he might try the same type of action again? I'll tell you, it's the kind of play, Sam, that if you run that option, if, if Swanson is not open, he's the option to run it himself. That can be. I always, we try to go for a two-option situation where the quarterback could pitch it, run it, throw it, or run it. That's what we've always done. What a game. We're going to look at the final play right now. They're going for two. Down 20-19, to 19, Terry Creek. One chance to win the state championship. Durant, will roll his right. He looks. He's hit. He gets away. Hit the five. He's trying to run in. Hit the two. Hit the one. He's out of bounds. He did not make it. He out at the one-yard line. And that should do it. Cry is up. The clock, I don't know why they didn't snap the stop stop the start the clock when the ball was snapped. That's gonna be a 15-yard penalty, but it doesn't make any difference, Ron. Well, Sam, what I can't understand is they caught the play we talked about. They did roll it out. Instead of rolling to his left, the Rams rolled to his right, his right hand side. He got hit at about the 10, he broke the tackle, got down to the three, got hit a couple times, and knocked down at the one. Well, I don't understand this. Why is the clock not moving? I don't think you move the clock, Ron, on a two-point play. Guess not. That's our fault. I don't think you do that. Well, we've had a flag down, so there apparently still will be four seconds left to go in the game. It looked to be Gatewood as the man who nailed him out of bounds I right at the one. You're right, Sandy. Jane Keith Gatewood with a lot of help there. Half the TJ team had a shot at him, and Gatewood knocked him down to one. TJ is Sam player. That will be called for a delay of game since most of their supporters have rushed onto the field. But with four seconds to go, the situation is this. Cherry Creek is down 20-19. to 19. They have to kick the ball off. We're going to get an onside kick. We'll get an onside kick, obviously. Let me ask you this, Ron. Was that a planned play for him to bootleg like that, or do you think he missed the handoff? With all the excitement, I didn't I didn't hear you. It was hard to tell, but I think it was a planned play. I think the play was saying to roll out right, have the option of throwing into the end zone or running the ball. I think what happened was the right outside linebacker for TJ, Jeff Leedy, came in quickly and forced uh, forced the ranch to go a lot far deeper than he wanted to. He was back in the 10, 12 yard line. He had no pass option by the time they were in that deep. He didn't That's have right. enough time to get he off the field. Time. He had to run the ball. He, he, had, he made a heck of a run another, to get to the one. Another big defensive play, and that's what you have to give those those kids in the brown shirts from TJ. This has to go down as one of the most exciting. 4A State High School Football Championship games of all time. Sam, with four seconds to go, I don't know what chance Cherry Creek has. Even if they recover the onsides, they have no timeouts left. No timeouts. I don't know how they could get a team on quick start as soon as the ball is touched here. And they do have the good field goal kicker, but it doesn't look real good with four seconds to go. Right? Well, I guess you're right. If they were to recover it and get him on as fast as it could be, try one, but it would be awfully tough. So Cherry Creek. We'll try some sort of onside kick. Bill Goldie will kick. He kicks the onside kick. It's bounced around. I think it's going to be knocked out of bounds. It was hit by TJ, knocked out of bounds. The clock says one second left in the game. Let's see who's got the football. And it looks like Cherry Creek has recovered the ball, Sam. Well, they're going to try to throw the ball this maybe here. TJ ought to put all their, their people back. They ought to put about five. They look like they're in a little confusion, Ron. They don't confused. even have 11 guys on the field. They need a timeout. I'll tell you, they don't have to wait. That's it. The game is That's over. It. Cherry Creek couldn't get a playoff. And Sam, I think the game ends in a little bit of confusion here. The, the clock was stopped. Cherry Creek had their offense on the field, yet they couldn't get a playoff. That's true. I thought that the clock the official signal to stop the clock on the side, so I thought they would have time to get it, but it doesn't look like it, right? Well, one of the wildest games I think we have ever seen, and we're going to take a break, and we'll come back and discuss it all. The final score, Thomas Jefferson. State champions of 1980, TJ 20, Cherry Creek 19. We'll be back in 60 seconds.